already knew things were really strange, you know, clown world. But when he brought that to my attention, it just solidified it in me that we're here having an experience, but this isn't it. This is just a shadow. It's an in-between or whatever, but this is not the end. There's more. It, and, and it's so obvious when you keep looking, like we can't say certain names on the internet. What the? Five years ago, would you have, you'd be going, what? But if we said that person's name, we would have lost our channel on YouTube. Nice. That was clown world. It is just drawing my attention more and more to God mm. that this, I forget how, Justin says we're digital. He's analog. He's real. We're in the digital. Mm. And then I, when you started talking about now, I keep going, I think it's Paul Tillich. Somebody said everything is the eternal now. Mm. And if you, mm. it's hard to think about when we're linear and we have to go through time, but I keep thinking about how God must see things. And I, he's, I, he, if he brought that hummingbird to me, he's probably hitting playback right now. You know, he can, he can hit playback, but I'm stuck in the, in the game or like Tron, whatever, you know. And the goal for me is to see everything he's showing me before the real becomes real to I spent so many years not seeing these little things. Like I would have thought, Oh, that hummingbird, how adorable. Yeah. But I wouldn't yeah. have gotten the spiritual side of it. And now that I'm at this point where almost nothing is helping my physical pain, I'm having to dig, dig, really dig deep to get some kind of respite. Hmm. Like this is the only word. It's there all the time. But when I'm distracted by something I love, like when we talked like that night, you said, oh, you probably need to go. I didn't have any idea it was ten after 10 o'clock. I wasn't having any pain. I was distracted. And it's a good distraction. It's something I need. And I started thinking out on the porch, don't look at this in a, like I'm going downhill way look at it as a find a, a way to find new ways to be distracted <laughs> you know i had this camera that was marks i tried using it but it's a little older and this one is the same kind of thing but newer and i can and i'm having a new distraction i can't read like you were saying yeah. i told Eric mar he's he's he understands he's not pushing but he said, did you read anymore? And I said, I can't, Eric Mar. I, I just can't read. And he sent, said something funny to me about awesome. He said, wouldn't it be nice if awesome, the hamster could come and tell you jokes and make you Martian nuts? And I was like, oh, how sweet. There's another one of those dark nights. Yes. He's a honey, isn't he? That's his mm. whole, yeah, he's got this thing. He's got this absolute conviction of the hope and the the beauty of his story and it mm -hmm. is just so uplifting to meet an individual who is just so i don't know convicted is it of god's he, message yes he's so self-assured yeah. he's where i want to be that that calm confidence yeah. and i know he has days where he's not feeling it but sure. he ex it. Yeah, doesn't he? Like a, a big brother for me. Yes. I know he's older than me. I don't know how much, but some of these people that are the dark nights are about my age. Yeah. I will say the one guy, it's Doc Holiday. I'm not going to tell yeah. what his, because I don't think he'd want us to, but he's the one that I, yeah. my newest dark night. Right. Right. And I'm starting to see, yes, we have our own special thing, hmm. but there's men in the, if you look at it like an electron and protons and we've got these men around us yes. we're we're in this whole thing together and we're concentrating in the core right here and they're taking care of eve 
I was just thinking that the other day when, when I started talking to Doc Holliday, his, he's that kind of person to me, the one that I would think, oh, if I, if I couldn't count on my son, who would I call on? Mm-hmm. Someone like him or Chris Duguid, a, a younger version. Yes. So it's okay for us to, they're going to hang on the periphery. They don't want to come into this feeling hurting thing Got that it. we're doing. Because he even told me, he says, I, nothing can help me but God. And I was thinking, yeah, that's true. But, you know, God, God has little angels. <laughs> so I'm going to try to do more things. I have been kind of numb, not like I told you the other day. I'm not really present on lines. I'm putting things there, but my heart's not there. Yeah. I've been in my own pain. But today I had to come out of it a little bit because after talking to him, I was thinking, there are people out there that are hurting like we are. Yes. And if I t- turn so inward and I'm not able to help anyone else, here they come out of the woodwork when I can't. So when, when I'm able, I need to be doing what I know I'm supposed to be doing. And I think you were the one that said I have the gift. No, it was a crimson capsule kitty says I have the gift of encouragement. Oh, you do. You so do. You really do. I was thinking a little while ago, I don't know how many weeks, Lady uh, Lady Red, Lady Red put on her thing, how do you feel, find my channel? What's my feedback? How do you like the... And I just thought it's 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 a thing. It's an actual real thing. When somebody makes a channel, a place where people can come to for nurturance or yeah I think that's what your channel is like and I think that's what Lady um, Lady Red's channel is like for me when I need yeah. to have a little bit of and then of course you know there's people like Rush and Chris Duguid I go yeah. over to them when I want a little bit of um, it's a different it's a different type of, of, of encouragement it's like a, um, I don't know Rush is a lot about vibrations and I like that way of thinking because I get that panicky feeling like this and then Rush makes me want to feel, just bring it Calm back. Just, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm finding that there are, that there's each channel has its own little personality. And yes. yours is definitely one, which is for gentle smiles and encouragement and, and that feeling yeah. of wisdom. I think, I think that's what I'm looking for. I think that with yours, I get more more of just a, we're going to be okay with, and sort of a, we're going to be okay because this is the reason. <laughs> so it's that level of firmness that I find in your account, like, a, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it is, you know, before, just quickly picking up on the thing that you were saying about Clown World. Before the, all the book bannings and all this nonsense started, there was a lot of things that I'd learned through university that I could find. One of them is this amazing thing, for me amazing, that somewhere in the, the 1800s or the early 1900s, they did, somebody did a study and found out that if there are more than five girl children, five or more girl children in a family, without a male child, the chance of one of those daughters being mentally ill is about four times as much as if there's a male child. There's a something about women in a group that becomes dysfunctional. And you add one dose of male energy to that group, even a little boy, and it's enough to protect And the thing that really hurt me so much about learning about the internet was Democrats are mentally ill. All Democrats are mentally ill. Women and Trump derangement syndrome, you know, that whole thing. And only Uh when I came to the absolute acceptance of my mental unwellness, whatever it is, did I start seeing it in terms of Wow, these women have got out of control. 
it's all lesbianism and hating and screaming and book banning and everything. Mm -hmm. And all this thing that I thought was such a lovely movement and that was bringing this, this sense of identity and finding yourself and loving who you are. That's what I thought it was about in feminism. And mm -hmm. suddenly I stepped back and saw it's not that anymore. It's yeah. hatred. Hatred's probably a bit strong, but yeah. it's Some animosity maybe. Mm. So yeah. when you talk about Justin and how he brings this perspective to you, I think about that, but I can't prove it anymore because I can't find it on the internet anymore. It's buried on page 72 of the search results thing. Mm -hmm. So that's why when I started talking to you, I said, I think I have to look to the Bible for my, because I can't find anything online anymore to back up biblical teaching. No, but when you add that, what you were just saying, that level of protection, just one little boy, isn't it funny that I was starting to see the same thing, that these men, they belong here. Their position is different, but they're bringing balance. You know, like we were talking the other day, Eve without Adam is a problem. <laughs> That's when Eve got into trouble. So we, we have this thing for us, and they'll benefit from it. But the, this thing for them is more of a, we're here, girls, it's okay, kind of thing. That's what I'm feeling. They know, I know couple of them understand pain very well. Mark. Yeah. Mark knows pain, physical and mental. So I know they understand this, but their goal is different than ours. Men have always been the protectors. Yes. And if we let them be that, it'll be it'll just make this even more happy because I was thinking of this limitation of just these women talking but that's the way it needs to be because we're the ones that got off track. We're the ones that are trying to figure out what's wrong. And they're the encouragers, the, the warriors, like my son. He, he, if that's not a warrior, I don't know what is. I feel so safe having him here. Yes. And when I think of Eric Marr and these other men that are around us that are hovering, it's for our protection and it feels so it feels good. And I, Beautiful. I'm not going to worry anymore about what we do, how we do it, when we do it. I think this spontaneous thing and knowing that we're, we're okay. Like you were saying, like God tells us, well, the relationship again in heaven, God, father, God, mother, God, son, I still say the Holy spirit has the feminine aspect. It's the same thing happening here. We're having God the Father protecting us, and we've got the men around us, and we're the women trying to get some wisdom. And I think it's just, it's coming together. I, you were saying, are we ever going to get anything up that we can use? I, I'm not worrying about it, because we can take this stuff and fix it down the road. We're talking right now. We can we can put this together. Fine. But the fact that we're, we're doing it, we don't know how yet. We don't know all the where's and what's, but if worse came to worse, we could put us up there with our mess everywhere. And <laughs> I'm hoping to do better, but it's just the fact that we took the bull by the horns and we went and did it. And I'm all week. I've been just withdrawn. I haven't done much with the channel. I haven't talked. I think I talked to Mark once and I talked to you one other time, but for pretty much I've been, turning the computer off and going gathering myself back together yes. because they're I know I have to grieve but I feel like I shouldn't do it alone I should share what's happening yes. and all of us have complicated relationships so the fact that my grieving is kind of strange to someone else I'm sure there's someone out there that probably has an even stranger story and the fact that I'm willing to talk about it and try to figure out how we can make it better for everyone else. Even just the fact that we're talking and trying to do something is, I'm glad we're doing it. I'm not going to sit here and 
focus on, oh, well, I haven't got anything put up on my channel yet. Okay, well, it'll come. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. I was speaking, my psychologist was saying to me the other day, you're so determined. We have something that we talk about, okay, because, so this all started when Kylie died, right? Before I've had therapy and I've had all that stuff that you do when you have these problems. But mm. with Kylie dying, I engaged with this clinical psychologist. And one of the things that we have got to in these last few months is that I have in my head two rooms. I have the cursed room and the blessed room. And I can't be in both rooms at the same time. And so most of my time I'm sitting in the cursed room. Everything's wrong with me. Everybody hates me. Everything I do is awful. Nobody wants to be around me. Yeah, that you heard me say all those stupid things. Anyway, that's really true. It's really real. And, and as soon as I say them to him or say them to you, I realize that's not like that. My life's much bigger than that. But when I'm sitting with that pain, I can't get out that room. I know and, exactly what you Yes. And he said to me the other day, you have a man who is doing everything in his power to help you and support you. But because you haven't had that before in your life, you're not prepared to recognize it. And he said, you have three children and one of them is reaching out to you and and helping you and trying to um, support you, but you can't acknowledge it. You can only say, my children won't this, my children won't that. And I'm listening to you this morning and I'm hearing you saying, God the Father, God the Mother, God the Holy Spirit. And I'm so aware of you having found the knights, having your son and grandson, and you're there in the middle of the sandwich. And I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, but I am too. And all the time thinking I'm in the cursed room. Nobody loves me. I'm all by myself. I have this guy here at the orchard who's bending over backwards to help me with this. I have a big computer here on the floor, which is a big brand new desktop. This that I'm speaking to you on is the laptop. Well, something's gone wrong with his computer. Oh, so he's he's built himself a new one because that's what he does. So from the one that's that's wrong, he's fixed all the parts that are wrong and given it to me so we can do this so that oh, I know it, it's not properly put together. But because he saw that I was having difficulty with the streaming, mm -hmm. he and now when he was telling me about his computer this and he hates his computer and everything i was being all sympathetic and saying well you know getting a new one is good for you and you should spend that money on yourself and you know and i'm trying to be all girly and helpful and not being able to see that it probably wasn't actually his main priority his main priority was to give me something without making me feel awkward mm -hmm. And they're I'm, there. There we go. I haven't seen my Adam. Here was my, these, these are my Adams. Mm -hmm. There's another channel that I've been talking to lately. I don't know if it's male or female, but I'd be willing to bet it's male. Yeah. Authentic antique arms. Oh, yes. If Near it ends up being a female, day. she's a powerful female, but I think it's a guy. And he's another one that supportive type. He's, Whoever this person is, they said, if you want to live long enough to come over to England, I'm going to commit to building a bar and you better come over here and see me. And when I heard that, it was like, oh, here's another night, <laughs> literal night. He puts pictures of the Crusades and things. And that's where that word dark night came from. That's why I have to give them credit, male or female, whoever they are. They're having an impact on me. And all I did was ask John to take the NSFW off their page. And now they're like forever grateful. And I'm like, <laughs> here we go. And speaking of another night, yes. how about John? If that's not a night, he has answered my, I, I'm just amazed how many times I've gone to him and said, John, can you help me with this? And he did. 
And he was so kind when my mom died. He oh. sent me a private message about how sad he was for me. And he was he was there for me. And that his mother was living with him. And I'm, wow. That's what I'd love to tell Censorship Sucks if I could talk to him again. Yeah. I don't have anything against mines. I love John. John is a doll, you know? It's, they're there, and we can't discount that they're there, but I don't think they want us to go, oh, look what's, he, they don't want that thank you, public thanks. They don't want that at all. No. But they're very happy to be in the electron pairing. <laughs> I, I do see it that way. Like we've made the nucleus and now we have these electrons around. And some of them are female and some of them are male and some of their roles is one. And, but it's building. And that's what you said you were hoping would happen, that this would go further than just you and me. Yes. And it already is. It's incredible, isn't it? It's as if I, 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 I keep on thinking it. God's doing this work. We just mm -hmm. like dumped into his ship, sort of, and it's, mm -hmm. it's happening all around us. And the only thing that I think we've done is have the eyes to see it. Yes. And now God's yeah. doing everything else just because we saw. Mm -hmm. And what's on my channel on the about? Can you see? Can you That's see the first see? question I ask everybody because people are always seeing but never really really seeing it's amazing. but I'm seeing it now I'm seeing it it makes me think of that C.S. Lewis thing I told you about his idea of the great dance of this light of heaven and all of us in it like like moths around the flame you dance that's kind of the way I'm seeing this it's all coming together and it doesn't have to be after we die. You were saying the other day, maybe you'll get cured. Maybe you aren't going to get worse. And I was thinking, why not? I'm not going to rule that out. I was pretty much facing my casket up until then. I was like, okay, and you know, this is what's coming. Yeah. But then you said that. I'm like, hey, maybe I don't have to be standing on the edge of the grave. <laughs> Maybe we don't. Maybe it's just our terrible disappointment and disheartenment that's made us think, because I think I'm so old. Oh, I'm just so old. But it's okay, I'll die soon, so I can just make it through. Then I'm thinking, hey, if God has called me, he hasn't called me just to make it to the end of my di life and die. I need to, like, I don't know, be a bit more grateful or something. Yeah, be alive. Yeah. Be present. Yeah. yeah be I, present. I was, yes. And that's something that even though I'm not interacting, I have been present. I'm not out there just, even though my feelings and thoughts are kind of in limbo, there's a reason for me to be there. It's a time that he's put it there for me. It's when I go outside, that's my little, that's my church. That's my cathedral. Absolutely. And I took a short little video while I was out there of the sounds that I hear when I'm out there. It's mostly bird. Every once in a while you hear a saw in the distance, but you can hear the birds around. And I was like, this is my cathedral. These birds, they're, they're singing. And when you, you can't stay in that dead state too long when something like that happens. And I, it made me think of you talking before. We're not going to stay in one stage for it's not like six months of this and a month of that. And later you'll accept it's cycling all through because right now I'm feeling pretty good tomorrow. It might. So it is, it's a, a real cycle. And another cycle that I'm starting to see is this gratefulness is coming in for me because I was kind of at that numb stage and I was, I always pray when I'm outside, I pray and meditate and I always give thanks for everything I can think of. And I was out there today praying and I, and it came to my mind. Thank you, God. My parents might not have been perfect, but they were kind enough to put money aside and I can look at this house. My mother gave me the money for this house too, after dad died. Wow. 
And I had to take a loan out to get rooms for my daughter built downstairs that she walked away from. And it always hurt me so bad. It was $20,000 loan that I took out. Wow. Guess how much money mom and dad set aside for me? I think $20,000. It's like they it came back to me. I, I Every time I think about it, I'm like, oh, my God. The blessings are everywhere. And here, last week, I was thinking, oh, mom didn't love me like my sisters. Even though I was accepting of my sisters getting it, it still was hurting me, mm -hmm. you know. But even so, even though we were treated differently, there was a good side. My mother and dad went and made arrangements so there would be money set aside for all their daughters. I know my other sisters have got, I'm sure I know a couple that they've gotten. So they were thinking ahead and loving me enough to do that. And I'm thinking of all the negative things. And it really hit me today out there. Let go of, and I thought I had to let go of the negative. I'm sure I'll revisit it again. But that grieving thing, you know, grieving the lost child, grieving. But I can let them go. I can say, you know what? It's okay. And I did to some degree, but when that hit me today, you had a $20,000 loan and here they just handed it right back to you and said, if I wanted to, I could pay the house off today. Yeah. I've decided not to. I've decided that I'm going to fix my bathroom. There's things that need to be done. If I paid the house off, I'm not going to have the money to fix anything. And that my mortgage is $175 a month. <laughs> I haven't got anything to complain about, but I went through this whole week of, oh, they, I don't want to let them down. I don't want to spend this money in a way that's not good. And it started crossing my mind. Here I am. I'm, I'm appreciating them. I'm, I'm seeing the good side of them now more than I saw the dark part. And I just started, God's telling me, be grateful, be grateful. Wow. Yeah, it's those little things like that that happened in my life over and over and over again. I, I really wish I had, like you could record your life. Have you seen those movies where, I think it was Robert, Robin Williams did a movie where he goes to through people's lives when they die and makes a movie. Did you ever see that? I don't think so. I think so. But basically, somehow he had an ability to watch their whole life. And I was just thinking about that. You could have made a movie out of some of the things that have happened. If someone could be there and see some of these things, they, how could you doubt after these cool, amazing things that happen? Yes. But when it goes to transferring it from experience and vision to telling someone else, like to put it into words on, on minds, for instance, there's like a, it's harder to do that. And I just, I wish I could just have someone experience that same being in the middle of a miracle. Life, every minute of life is a miracle. Even the dark stuff. Lately, I've been out there praying, hey, you know what? Thank you for even the dark times and the bad times because they got me where I am now because I love you and I know you're there. And if I hadn't gone through all those things, I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't. So there's a point to suffering. There's a reason for it. You know, you were saying, I don't know why. You just don't want to keep going. You're just like, ugh. There is a reason. Mm. Yes, there is a reason. And it's wonderful. It's Yes, it's it's exciting. It's exciting to step back. It's really hard. Grief is, like they say, all-consuming. Mm -hmm. And I think that, like, mm, so 22nd of August, 28th of August is her birthday, 22nd of August is her death day. No, 22nd of September. So why am I even saying this? You see, I'm so scatty today. You're seeing Great. it come. The grief is coming. I'm Your seeing... connections today. Yes. And grief is all consuming. And I think that's why I haven't been on, on, on minds at all. Well, not at all. But 
you haven't been present. That's right. I've just been doing what I feel I need to do to keep myself alive on minds, yes. But mm -hmm. it is, and it's so nice to become aware of the fact that, yes, this is grief. This is all-consuming. It comes in all its different patches, but we've all done it. Mm -hmm. We're all doing it. We're getting through it. Anybody who hasn't experienced this will experience this. And I'm not in a hurry for them to. It's not like, oh, well, I want it to be fair. I want everybody to see how awful it is. It's, I felt that with COVID. When, mm -hmm. when there was that terror and there was all those people and in New Zealand, everybody went and bought t toilet paper. Oh, I think it happened to you too. It was the meme, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. With those dinosaurs mm -hmm. running from the meteor. That was my best one. All the dinosaurs running away and the meteor coming and the one dinosaur saying, quick, let's get the loo paper. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, I think part of this grieving that we're doing is going to help people down the road because I don't, things are going to get worse before they get better. I really feel that deep, deep down. And I think, there may be down the road when we get these things up, somebody's going to go to these things and go, Hey, they, they made it. They're, they're hanging on. We can hang on. There's a lot of grief out there. Like everybody says, You're, we're not going back. This is the, there's, there's no going back. That, no that life, it's over. Yeah. It's over. It's over. Everything we knew. And who knows how it's going to play out. I, I have a bit of the prophetic. I, I can see the darkness. Mm -hmm. But I'm not one of those that can see past that into what's coming after. But I do know it's going to be, all of us are going to be in this boat soon. Anybody that has a heart to feel, they're going to be feeling this. And I don't know how, when, why, what the cause will be, but I don't think it's going to be all that long. I do think that things are going slower than I expected them to, mm -hmm. but, but I think that's because some of us were early wakers. You know those verses in the Bible, arise, awake, O oh sleeper? Yeah. We were early wakers. We're awake, and now we're saying, hey, we're already here. We, yep. Come on in. <laughs> and I think it's, it's going to be a good thing. I, I really look forward to seeing it going up on your channel and up on wherever we can get it. But until we do, it's benefiting us. It's, mm. We're actually going through the process. So somebody else can look at us going through the process and think they're not so crazy. Because I've been grieving all my life when I think about it. My whole life has been... I'm not saying other people haven't had a horrible time, but from birth on up, I've had rejection. My father left. My mother married someone else, then left. My husband's all, you know, grief, 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 grief. When I go back and look at it, the, the bright lights and the grief have always been my children. And I think that's why this is important, too, because I want to, before I leave this earth, give them as much understanding as I can and tell them, hey, yeah, we screwed up. And I know you have grief because I have grief or how I was treated. I want you to know it's okay. You can grieve. And hopefully they'll see the wisdom of someday you'll look back. Like I was telling you, someday you'll look back and it won't be painful anymore. You'll smile. Yes. Yes. And I'm working my way there. Yep. I'm feeling more smiles, but I don't know how, again, with this grief, it's open-ended. I don't think it ever really ends. I think you just learn how to deal with it, and it becomes more of a an autopilot thing. It's there, mm -hmm. and it's always going to be there, but you get to the point where it's not all-encompassing like we're right now. Yes. It just took everything I could to walk off that porch and come back in and get back because I just, I'm still in the middle of it. It's still painful. It's terrifying. Yes, yes. And it is going through. And I think that that, that that thing that I was saying to you about other work is happening underneath our pain. 
Mm -hmm. I really, I really, really, really believe that pain is, it's a bad, we use it in our society in a very bad way. We yeah. use it negatively, we experience it negatively. But what if we renamed the word pain? What if we called the word pain experience? Or, see, I'm having a lot of experience happening in my heart right now. It's, it's hard, hard to integrate it's hard Carly's mm -hmm. death oh, I'm always on that I have just, at some stage I've just got to move on as if there's more things in my life but you're not you don't need to yet don't push yourself that loss you had I, I keep thinking about it every day if that had been just an, and the minute I say that word it's like there's a stabbing pain in which I can't hardly breathe so if you're feeling bad about not being right, don't. Because just thinking of it makes me want to sit in a corner and curl into a ball. So don't. Please don't cry. You're the first cry. person who said that to me. You're the first person who acknowledged to me that I'm not. Everybody says, I'm not going to think that about my children. I won't let myself go there. I just want somebody to just acknowledge this was my child, not my brother, not my mom. It was, it was part of you. She was part of you. It's not going to be easy. When I see you knocking yourself, I'm like, oh, Bob Dub, you just give yourself time. Because it. I'm in a better situation than you are because I was further apart from both of the people I'm mourning. I had already given up on, you know, Mark and I ever being back together. My husband was, he was gone. It was over. And his death was just like the, the hammer hitting the nail and saying, yeah. okay, this is gone. This relationship is, it's final. And the same with my mom. I, I already separated a lot from her because she had her own new life and I had my life and, we just kind of bounced off each other for a lot of our adult life, which now I'm kind of grieving that too. But my grief is more removed. Yours is fresh. Yours is a cut in your heart. You're, you're literally bleeding right now. Yours is mind boggling. It's like a, when you were talking about Mary, that's when it came to me. Oh, my God. Well, I, I went through a year where I thought about how the pain that Jesus went through and the going to the cross. And I thought about Mary and all of the people, John, everybody there. And then it, when you said Mary, you were hearing Mary telling you, yes, I've been there. She's the only one that's been there for you. I can't because I, I can only think of what it could be like. You're in it, and she was there. So she is your comfort. And don't feel. I, there were points where she said stuff about, like, is he has he lost his mind? You know, all those things that you might have thought when she was younger. Mary thought those too, you know. Yes. And Mary hurt. I'm sure she hurt over every word she didn't say, everything she didn't do. And I know that's what's happening with you because I feel it with my mom and, and, and Mark, but you must be feeling it 10 times more. It's to me, it's bizarre because there is the grief, but there's also this other thing is that her dad absolutely dominated and manipulated my life. He was terribly abusive. He cut me off from everybody around me, my mother, my friends, everything. And he would lie to them about me. And then he would keep me away from them so nobody could, I couldn't figure out the lies. And, oh, it was just a nightmare. So, um, then again, I've forgotten. Then I got rid of him finally in the end when he was such a horrible drunken. Anyway, and then I thought, okay, I'm free. But I wasn't free because Carly stepped right into that gap and started doing that same thing to me. I had to think her way, and I had, and it was awful. Like at one stage, I changed my phone number after having the same phone number for ten years, and she had this meltdown. This absolute. She felt that I'd betrayed her, and because I changed my phone number, 
And so, yes, I've got this hideous death to deal with. And suicide, too. I wish she could have died in a car crash or something. I wish I, anything. Yeah. You're so but, much more painful. But I have, at the same time, this this absence of this horrible mental illness that has dominated my life for the last 25 years. And so I have this grief, and I have this blessing. I have this wonderful healing, this freedom to be me, and all those things. And um, last week when we were talking about walking in the garden and where was Adam when Eve was, yeah. And I feel that very much that I have come back to the garden. God's bringing me back to the garden. But then I'm straight back to the fruit and the struggle and the man and the, yeah. So anyway. Because we've sorry. lived this imperfect world and you've had bad examples of men and good examples of the same thing with me. And I had years, I've been literally classified crazy. I went through so much grief and pain and agony. I wasn't really mentally ill. I, well, I guess that's the way it seems to other people, but it was a natural reaction to what I was living through. Yes. It was a poor coping mechanism, but it wasn't just because I'm nuts is because I lived through this and that and that and that. And when you, I want to tell you, just let yourself be. We've been talking about this, being present. Just go through whatever it is. You're going to rebuild. It's like the layers of an onion. We, we've been pulling them back and peeling them away. But when you're grieving, you're going to work through all that stuff. And eventually all this mental thing it's going to fade because when I started, I know it by myself because I was at that point where, man, I didn't think I'd ever heal. I was just, I was on all kinds of medication for anxiety, for racing thoughts, inability to sleep. And I had a third husband who was extremely abusive mentally he did the same thing yours did uh, keeping you away from people lying about you making you look bad to everyone and then doing all the awful things he could do to stab you in the back behind yourself oh, too yeah Take oh, money yeah. Out of the bank, treating your kids bad yeah. and i didn't get better and start coming out of this until i finally because i had to told him to hit the door yeah. And then when he died, there was a little bit of grief when he died, but that was such a complete separation. It was like, mm -hmm. you need to be gone. Yeah. I'm doing what's right for not just me, but for my family. Because if I had let him stay, I would have lost my grandson in most likelihood because he was in foster care. Mm -hmm. So when I stood up and took the stand and said, get out and stay and became me again. It was like I snapped back. That mental illness started to fade. I had a, a, what, a telehealth appointment with my psychiatrist this past week. Okay. It was so funny. Yeah. I had told her um, desk person that, that writes down all your information before they call you. I told her, I'm not taking anything Dr. Webster gives me anymore, but Ropenarol and it's for restless leg. And I was laughing about it. Like, this is so funny. Well, she didn't think it was so funny. <laughs> She's like, you're not taking anything I prescribed for you anymore, but Ropenarol? And I said, yeah. She says, well, maybe you don't need me anymore. And I said, maybe I don't. <laughs> and she got kind of mad. She was like, well, do you think we should stop then? It was so funny. It was like she was trying to hang on to my illness when I'm telling her, I don't think I need you anymore. And she's a neurologist too. So she could keep giving me the Ropenarol, but it's like, hey, I don't need your Seroquel anymore. Oh, I don't oh. need your Ativan. I, I don't need it. Yeah. And she says, well, what happened? Why, why are you this way? And I, part of this because I started using Rick Simpson oil. Oh my God, you thought I'd said the devil when I said that. She says, oh, so you're trading your prescriptions for something that's going to make you mentally ill? And I'm like, lady, since I've been off Seroquel, I feel more healthy than ever before in my life. And if it's that or you, I'll take the Rick Simpson oil every day. And she was like, oh, 
okay, well, let's have an appointment. <laughs> She's just like overwhelmed. There was nothing else she could say. Gosh. I don't think she's ever had anybody that said, hey, I'm healed. I don't need you anymore. <laughs> It's, it's it's wonderful, isn't it? It's wonderful to get to that place when you suddenly realize I, I've i used this, I've needed this, and now look at me. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get there. That's what I'm telling you. Because okay. this has happened to you because of what you've lived through. And it's like, again, you've been on a different path, but in a similar circumstance, a, a rhyming situation. Yours yeah, is yeah, similar... Yeah. You've got your own little twist. Mm. Mm. And I know because I've been through it that if you just keep, even if it's just a toe moving forward, yes. and if you just have to stop and stand in place, that's fine too. If you have to fall back, mm. that's okay too. It's just, you got to go through it. Like you said, you got to go through it. And even though neither one of us has felt like it, we're still doing the things we have to do. You're still keeping your channel alive. You're, so it shows that you've got, you're there. Yeah. You're just, you're healing. Yes. It's going to. Yes. And I think that, I think that it's strange, but I really feel that this is the time of tribulation. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people around me are saying, well, the rapture's going to come, the rapture's going to come. And I'm like, no, I think it came. I think we got left. I think this is our reality. And whether I'm right or not, it's clown world. It's awful. It's, it's really horrible. You're drawing your own conclusion. And it's, it could be a very good one because I don't know either what's going on. But you, this is definitely tribulation. Definitely. When we have to wonder whether a year down the road, if we're still going to be able to get our Social Security because we're not wanting to take that jab or the food stamps that I depend on could be gone because, sorry, I have to take that. We're, we're headed down a dark road. Last and week I, I got my message from my doctor. I got a text message saying, uh, it's your turn now on the roll. Make your appointment and come in. I can't tell you what it's done to me inside. I'm just like, uh, you know when they say my legs turn to jelly? It's like my whole body is turned to jelly. I have to go and do this thing. I have to. Uh, See, I wonder. I say I'm going to refuse, but all the way to the last second, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the courage to keep refusing. And didn't I tell you a month or two ago, I'm wondering if some of us might not end up being martyrs because... I think it's going to eventually get to that point for one reason or other, we're all going to be faced with you're either going to have to take it or you're not. If that's not the mark, I don't know what is. If this isn't it, there's a another one coming down the road and this one's leading to it. And I'm, it's come through my head a couple of times. Do I have the resolve if it gets to that point to say, no, I, if it means what am I going to lose? My son, my great, what, Yes. I have to what am say, I, gonna I have to say, I'm going to say no. I, I have to put that hard in my heart because it's a line drawn in the sand. Mm. And I, this is not my body. This is God's body that he gave me. And I've been, he's made it clear to me, don't take it. I, it's firm in my heart. Mm. And if it ha it might not be that way for everybody else, but I'm seeing it. If it comes down to it, Eric Mar said it today. He was talking about something, and uh, we were talking about we might end up in the camps or something. Yeah. And I said, oh, not me. They'll have to kill me. I am not going to one of those. Mm -hmm. And I have to think of this now. And it, it, right in the middle of all this grief and everything else, yeah, we've got an yeah. existential crisis. crisis. At our face. There's another girl that's going through the same thing. You are um, the girl that's been on Josh Who with um, uh, Willie, that girl, Denise. Oh, Denise. She lives in England. And she's at the same situation. She's like, how can I say no? I don't want it. But I'm like, ah. Hmm. She's between a rock and a hard place. And, oh. Uh, if any time ever needs to be that you understood who God was and know that he's on your, that he's here, you better know now because 
it could get to the point where everything depends on how much you trust him. That's right. And I was more going to say no. I was going to say no. And my sort of friends and everybody had talked to me about how important it was. And so I got to the place where, where I was said, well, I will have it, but after a while. I'll just delay it and see, and, and if I can feel a little bit, then I'll go. But I've got about a year or maybe a year and a half. I don't need to rush. I'll just... And who knows what's going to happen between now and then. And I, so really... I got there, but then last week when I got this text, it was real. And I couldn't say those things anymore. I had to actually face up to the fact that, no, this is now... And I still don't know what I'm going to do. All my friends are saying, we'll go with you. We'll sit there. You don't need to be. Well, not all my friends. I said, two of the women from the ballet group I go to. Those are my friends. We'll people go are with you. You'll so be okay. Hard. And I'm like, I can't even say to them, you don't understand how I feel. They're just like, mm -hmm. well, we know it's a bit sore. and But it's not they that bad. No idea. And you know, one of the you know, things I, that I've had is with these stupid psychiatric medicines is that I've they've I've found out that I get the rare side effects. You know, mm -hmm. like we were talking about Seroquel with that rigid, you know, the jumpy, yeah. I get all mm -hmm. of those. And the psychiatrist said to me, what we know is that nobody gets these things. Everybody, Everybody's fine except 1%. And then we battle with them to give them every medicine because if they react to one medicine badly, they react to everything badly. And so I've been trying to tell people, you know, okay, I know there's a lot of hype about the thing and I know that you could, you can look at me and put me down and say that I'm not stable or whatever. And all those things could be valid. But there's another thing here as well. There's another layer, and that seems to be my life the whole time. Is everybody, oh, yeah, yeah, we've been through that, we've been through that. And I remember when my husband was hitting me, and I didn't want to tell anybody because I was so ashamed that it was happening. So I would mm -hmm. try to tell people the other things, you know, because I thought the other things were bad enough. And people would say, yes, yes, we completely understand. Every marriage has its ups and downs. You know, you're just going to have to, and I just thought, I can't believe this. I'd like, what do I have to do to get somebody to, I was going to say, be on my side. I don't mean that in a childish way. But I just wanted somebody in my corner to help me talk through my things. But all I had was, you're going to be okay. Everything's going to be fine. And it wasn't. It wasn't fine. Mm -hmm. I got divorced. My children are basket cases. They. Anyway, we won't go on about that. But it's, it's, you can't just focus on one thing. It's like everything's collapsing. Yeah. It's like, oh, and that I, seems to be what's happening with this to, that. yeah, that's our society. That's happening to our society. I mean, before, yeah. before COVID, there was Trump, you know, before Trump, yeah. there was Hillary. Yeah. Before Hillary, there was Bush. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm talking as if I'm an American, but you know, America's hugely significant on the world stage. Yep. And when I discovered that, that Hillary was so corrupt was when mm -hmm. I went over to visit my parents in America. And I'd been there for 10 days. I was only there for three weeks. I'd been there for 10 days. And I got this letter in the mail from Hillary Clinton. Where I'm in the campaign trail and I see that you've come to our country and... I know that you want me in power and please, you know, every dollar is important. Even if all you can do is give me $20. Yeah, I got a begging letter from Hillary Clinton. Wow. And I thought, I grew up in Africa and I thought that Chinese and African and Asian politics were all corrupt and manipulated. And now I found that our politics... The thing that it's, I thought that I could rely on. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's another thing we're having to face. Not only are we dealing with our own personal thing, but I'm watching my country implode. You're watching the, yeah, and you're watching us as we're like, that's right. 
And I, I know the rest of the world is going, hmm, I wonder how it's going to work out for them. That's right. Well, my country that I don't have was Rhodesia, which is Zimbabwe, which I was pretty much thrown out of. My husband was denied his work visa and told that he was not welcome there because he was a South African. And we were given three weeks to leave the country. We had to virtually just give everything away. We didn't have time to sell or anything. And we had to move out as if we were refugees. So the country that I had isn't there. And so America's sort of like the, the closest thing to my culture that I have. And you're watching it burning down. And I'm watching it burning down. And I'm watching the the white genocide happening in Africa. And I'm watching America being destroyed. And Europe is no longer Europe. And so, yeah, that, I, I feel this is the time of tribulation, whether or not it's actually the time of tribulation. It's certainly a tribulation. If that's what I said months and months ago. I don't know if it, this is the end of the world, but it is certainly the end of what we knew. Everything we knew the world to be. And we don't know what's coming. And that on top of all of our grief and everything, it's like it's it's testing our metal. Are, are we going to be able to stand under it? And I keep hearing that put on the whole armor of God and having done then stand stand with what you know mm -hmm. and i i have to go back to the bible because that's the way my faith is i hear these i grew up in a baptist church and i don't i don't agree with everything that they did but i'll say one thing they did they taught me the bible that's beautiful isn't it that's a yes. beautiful beautiful thing to have all your life i don't have that i yeah, remember when i knew friends baptist friends who were learning verses and i was uh, so stupid. All they want is ammunition for their their arguments and blah, blah, blah. And now I look back. I, I was a teenager then. I look back and think, yeah, no, it's really good to have those arguments for when times go bad, to be able to have the verse that's just going to pop in and say. Mm -hmm. really My good. memory has faded some where I can't remember them all, but I can remember enough that I can go look it up. What I I used to be able to just snap them off when I was younger because yes. that's the way they taught us, yes. and it didn't just they didn't just leave it at that level. They tried to get you to understand what was behind that verse. Yes. And the older I get, the one that I can't ever let go of. My grandma wrote it on almost every card she wrote, casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. Oh, how beautiful! It's in Philippians. I forget which one, <laughs> but. Thing. I'll never forget that. Yeah. Uh, it's in my head, and I know yeah. he cares. And I was looking up these are verses yeah. that I was talking about grief. I wanted to give you a couple of them. The one that really I put top at the beginning is Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And the person that made this list said, if you are still and quiet, you may feel the Lord's presence near you, but you may need to stop and listen for it. Beautiful. Wow. Isn't that exactly what I've been saying all day about how I know he's there, I feel him there? That was the one I wanted to give you. Like, If you don't think of anything else, think of this one. And my second favorite, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again. This is Jesus. And you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. It's in the Old Testament. It's in Psalms 46. But tell me, that's not Jesus telling that. He will see us again. And I already had to be still. and know you were. It's like I picked these verses, and the top one, I hadn't even looked at it, but then I'm reading it. You may feel the Lord's presence and I'm stopping. That's what this numbness, this, it's not just totally numbness. It's being still. It's waiting, listening, yes. hoping to hear. And I do. I, and I've been praying for you and for all these other dark beauties and dark nights. I've got a list. I'm going to have to start writing it down. But right now I can keep it in my head. And I pray for each of you every day. 
And the thing I pray for you is that you will understand that he's right there, that you will feel, maybe not now, but that at some point you will feel that presence like I do. Thank you. Even that just is a glimpse of it. Perfect prayer for me. That's what I've been really, really waiting for myself is to let the hurricane pass, let the wind pass, let the earthquake pass. Let, I can't remember what all those things were. That, mm -hmm. And then just wait on the small, still voice. Sometimes I hear it. Sometimes I hear it. And I know that if I did more practicing, more praying, more soaking myself in the word, more of that, I would hear it more. So I, I'm, not, I'm not feeling that God's staying away from me. I'm just sort of feeling that I'm just too overwhelmed to focus on it all the time. But mm -hmm. I feel also that God knows. <laughs> I feel a lot of support coming, even support for me changing. Not support mm -hmm. of, yes, yes, you'll get through this, it's, but support in as much as this is part of the process, it's going further. You're not stuck at this place, because that's what I feel. I feel it's going to be like this forever. How can I manage? Yeah. That reminds me, I was going to look it up and I didn't. There is a poem about the touch of the master's hand. Oh. And it talks about um, a tapestry. And you're watching God make this tapestry. And you're looking at it and you say, but I see all these threads and these knots. It's really not very pretty. But then he turns it around and says, this is the masterpiece of your life. I have made this for you. It's, it's a, in rhyme, and it's so beautiful. I'll have to look it up for the next time. But it's called The Touch of the Master's Hand. And I was thinking that today, we're all the ones that are listening for him. He's touching all of us. He's reaching me my way because I grew up with the Bible. And these I knew the verse. I just didn't know where they were. I knew enough to, to go and get the whole thing. But not everybody does that but they still get that same like Justin just said today he says I don't fear anything except for God and I know that me, he's not talking about afraid Fred he's meaning in awe and he gets his messages his way and you get yours a different way but he is there and sometimes someone just has to be reminded of it he, he's going to be polite he's not going to come knocking the door down and no it's like you said, he'll, you'll hear a quiet knock or you, you'll be drawn to something. And he is, even when you don't think he's there, give it time. L pay attention to what's around you because I see it all the time. And I think it's a matter of seeing that, that coming back to that. What do you see? What look you for see? it. Yes. Look for it. You're not going to find it if you don't look. Now, sometimes he will come and bowl you over because he's bound and determined to use you for something. But most of the time, he's looking for you to look back. I was telling um, someone, I was telling my friend Kathy the other day about how I just feel that every time I trust God for something, he messes up my life. <laughs> and she said, yes, yes, he exactly does. And I was like, like gobsmacked here I was having this mean like complaint about God and she said you know what God does is he he, he sees your little cottage there and he sees that you you've got this this really sweet little cottage that you've built and he sees your garden with your roses and your little path and he's really pleased with you and so he comes down and he smashes down the wall of your cottage and then he takes off the roof and then and you're there in your cottage like God and you're so busy complaining that you don't actually notice that there where he smashed down the wall and taken off the roof he's making you a much nicer bigger house to live in and I thought that was so cute I haven't heard that one before and she told it so beautifully but it was like, God, That's what are you like doing to my life? Yep. Like my terrible Terry, the white tornado. It's like he comes in and just, oh, well, this isn't working for her anymore. Let's do like Lego castle. Not right. this one out. Let's make something better. Yep. But we're not seeing that. We're no. just seeing the well, Rick's going flying. Like, what? Yeah. 
Why, God? Why? I was drawing closer to you. I was getting my life better. Why, when I walked away from that sin and that lifestyle, why now do you take my child? Why? You know, I mean, that's not really my answer. It's it's not really my question. It's more of a, it's you know, a that heart. thing that you say about grief, the grief cycle. I don't like mm -hmm. that questioning because, yes, it is. Why? But it's not a question. It's a how. No. It's yeah, it's not a pain. questioning. Mm. <laughs> like, oh, could you, oh, don't you know this is hurting me? Yeah. <laughs> but he does. He does. I, I think I, I wrote um, a story a while back about uh, Narnia Chronicles. The mm. one boy, uh, Eustace, becomes a dragon. Okay. And he doesn't like being a dragon. He became that because he always was lazy, didn't want to do things when everybody else was doing it. And because Narnia is magical, he becomes a dragon. And it takes Aslan the lion telling him, I'm really sorry, Eustace, but the only way you're going to get back to being you is for me to peel these things up. The skin's got to come off. And Eustace is like, but I don't think I can take the pain. And, and, and he's in that being ripped but then when it's all over he's got his nice pink skin back and he's not a dragon anymore well sometimes when you're grieving and you're you're not reacting the way the ideal way sometimes you get a little dragony yeah i know i sure had I some know. times there where i was spitting fire <laughs> <laughs> that's how to say it spitting fire is and you don't but he's to be. Hey, but it's not yeah thing. No. So it's it's, it's okay to be not feeling right. It's so I've had a couple of people tell me that, oh, don't worry about it if you're feeling like that. I I'm not gonna bother you if you need to go off and be alone yet. Mm -hmm. Most people get it. It's so funny how I can see that in your grief. When you explain I can see, oh okay, so you're doing this thing now, that's great. But when I'm in it, I've got that 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 it's not you got blind you should, um, Yeah. Like, yeah, like, I'm so bad. I shouldn't this. I haven't that. Blah, blah. Yeah, it, it, it's strange to me how another stage of grief that they say is anger. I haven't mm. been angry with her. I haven't been angry with God, really. Well, I've been frustrated that why couldn't he? But I've got, I've got, I, I came to terms with that a long time ago, that God doesn't mm. jump into my life and make it perfect. God gives me love and his love comforts me through the troubles. So I wasn't really, but what I'm finding is that the anger is towards myself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you, I haven't known that before. At least for me, sometimes I actually just hate myself. Me too. Because that failing that we all, you know, I want to do this, but I, no, I didn't. Mm -hmm. And it's... Yeah. That reminds I know me of Paul. He wants us not to feel that, though. He, yeah, yeah, like Paul. I don't do what I should do, and I'm doing what I shouldn't, and oh, I hate it. I hate it, but it still happens. Hey, yeah. And he knows it, though. See, that's what most people don't get. God understands. He was, you know, he came here. He was Jesus. Jesus walked through the same things we and went through a lot worse than any of us are ever going to go through. Mm -hmm. So he gets it. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's up there going. Oh man, you you really screwed up. No, he's not. If anything, he's he's holding his arms out, and in some cases, he's literally running after you, yes. he, like the prodigal. Yes. And I know I've been the prodigal before. I walked away from God because I couldn't handle it anymore. Everything, like you were saying, why is everything when I'm trusting you? Why are you blowing my life up? Yeah. Well. Maybe he wasn't blowing it up, but he was in there trying to rearrange it. Maybe I'm the one that blew it up. And he's putting the pieces back together. So it's I hard can't to accept that, hey, and to submit. Well, it was hard for me to submit myself to his will. I'm like, how could you that, do this to my life? I don't mm -hmm. want you. And then, okay. And you know I'm what really you have sorry. to say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't have to say you're sorry, though. I don't, because he, yeah, you, you have to repent for your lack of faith, maybe, but he's not looking for that is more. He's looking for you to say, you were there all along and not feel bad about it because he knows, he knows our reactions are going to be to turn away, to hide. Yeah. 
because he was us. He's been there with us and he is with us. I keep saying that he, you know, it's all around, but he's inside of us too. Mm -hmm. And the word that I keep hearing, surrender. Wow. To just surrender it all, give up trying to figure it out, surrender. give up trying to hang on to it, surrender it and just like I do out on when I'm thinking in my mind, here, here's all my stuff, God. Here's all these things that are hurting me. Here, take it. I surrender. I give up. Yeah. You take charge. Yeah. And I have to keep saying that prayer because I'll turn around and grab it back. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's that saying, yeah, I surrender. I, I know you know more than I do. And I'm starting to look. I ask him to show me the way, show me the path, even if it's, and that's another verse I keep hearing from childhood. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my, he's there, he's with us, he's in us, he's around. We shouldn't be afraid because he, it's like a bubble. He's got us all wrapped up. He's not only outside, he's inside, he's with, he's, he's all of it. He's everything. And we think that our grief is so all-encompassing and nobody can understand it. Mm -hmm. He can take that and absorb it and go, okay, give me more. I can hand foot. I love that. Give me more. Yes, you're right. So I don't blame him anymore. I, I think we put ourselves in a lot of these mm -hmm. situations. And for him to fix it, it looks like he's tearing our world down. But really, he's, he's making it where we have a chance to make it right. Because yeah. it's up to us. You could just sit there and just drown in your pain and start drinking and not talk to anybody ever again. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you are, you're surrendering. You're saying, okay, I've got to go through it. Yeah. I just wanted to say something... Um, about what we were talking about earlier and about the clown world and the end times and the tribulation and everything. I know you've probably heard all the, all the jokes that there are, but one of the ones that I just really, really love is about revelation. You know how John got that revelation and the, about the end times and how, okay. Well, apparently John was quite hard of hearing and when the angels told him that there was going to be trumpets at the end of time, he didn't actually say trumpets. John heard it wrong. What he was saying was there's going to be Trump pens. <laughs> Honestly, you know, though, I think that they were a sign. I think they were because part a lot of the change. Saw Trump as like a modern day Cyrus. He was coming to try to save our country. That's right. And because we've let things fall so bad and not stood up before, the election just got ripped to shreds. Whether he won or not, nobody believes it now. Nobody believes it now. So, but I think we he did something very, very, very good for the movement. Yes, he woke a lot of us up. Yes. And, and he I think he did legislation. Out. Yep. He put yep. He got stuff, like Space Force. Mm -hmm. And he had all those judges get through. Now, oh, some of them aren't yeah. living up to their end, but at least he got those people in. And I think it was a situation looking back at it, I told Justin, I knew he wasn't going to win. Something in me told me it wasn't what God wanted. I, he was like, this is happening because you guys fell down on the job and let these politicians turn this thing so crazy. So, so guess what? You get to live with it for a while. That's right. That's exactly what's happened. And he may come back. He may not. I don't know. But he was there for a reason. He was definitely. And he brought the patriots back to remembering the Bible. Because what was one of the first things he had on there? Yeah. Be strong in the Lord. How many times did he say that? He quoted verses out of the Bible, whoever those people are. Yeah. And it, no matter who it was and what the reason was, it has done something to the patriots. It's brought them back to knowing that God is the one that's going to change this. We're just waiting for everybody to wake up and see. He's waiting for us. Yes. Whatever's going to happen, it's not going to happen until 
there's going to be a tipping point. There's going to be a tipping point. Yes. Some of us are early risers, like I said, and it's going to happen. I feel it. I know it's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen, but yeah, it's going to be dark. Justin keeps hearing that word dark. He right. he told me the other day he heard dark by January. Wow, really? I don't know. Yeah, we're going to see if that comes true, but he's feeling this. He's saying he's feeling this coming. Mm -hmm. But he also said that he knows it's a battle that's going to be won. It's it's going to be time, to, and it, he doesn't even know if he's going to survive it. Yeah. But he's yeah. the young person saying, I know, I feel it coming. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Mm -hmm. So, And it's the men who've got it. It's, it's the yes. young men. Well, I, I call them young men. But I know they're our age and down to sort of 30. To the late 30s. Yeah. Late 30s, yeah. So they're not, they're not, I'm not, I'm not meaning they, they, they're 50. I don't know, maybe it's just a condescending way that I've got. Maybe I should change my way of speaking. But I do sort of see them as boys. Maybe they're just yeah, my peers. Yeah. Maybe I see us as girls and them as boys. Maybe I'm talking about our vulnerable parts when I talk about boys and girls. Yeah. Yeah, because even though I know he's ready and he's ready to fight, he's vulnerable. All of us are. I don't know who's going to survive it and who's not. None of us may survive. And all of us might survive. But he's hearing it. He's saying it's coming. And that gives me hope, too, because there is grief in knowing that what we had before is gone. But he keeps pointing it out to me. It was not all that great. He couldn't even get his own home. He couldn't even find a woman to marry because this world is so screwed up. It's not a bad thing. That the, again, God is rearranging things. And he's in control, people. Like it or not, you might think that everything's... No, he's letting the evil have its day. But he's, he's going to be the one that stomps his foot and says, that's enough. Yes. And Justin knows that. He feels it. Mm. And if he feels it and I feel it, and I know that he's got it covered, we really need to let go of all the fear. I know it's human to have it, but the longer we can say, the more we can trust him, the less we'll have that fear. Because nothing's gonna go back. It's, it's, we're in new territory. We really are. We, we're blazing new territory. You and I are doing something pioneering. We are. I, there may be other people out there doing it. But this is something he's putting together because he knows we're going to need a structure to carry us through. We were talking about grieving. Like, we don't have grieving patterns like used to be in the, the world. We, don't, we are so unmoored from everything that made us great as Europeans and yes. as our whole culture. We, we don't have what we... And it's gonna, it's it's not good. It's got to go. And even though we think, oh my God, my whole world is falling apart, if it wasn't all that great, it we should be glad great. it's going. And these old elite people that think that they're pushing us around. <laughs> hmm. I think that that was the thing about Trump. <clears throat> More than anything, I think that it was nothing to do with Trump. And it was bizarre to me that everybody, the media, everybody who could, attacked Trump as if the problem was Trump. The problem for them, their problem, is not Trump. Their problem is that millions upon millions upon millions of people voted for Trump. Mm -hmm. And they are shocked. Who They're after the you. Leader. I'm standing in the way. Which he was why, there to wake us up. And this is why, like I've said to you a million times, I'm like an old, boring old record banging on. This is the thing that I love about mines. It's fully end-to-end -end encrypted. What I say to you, I don't want some... New Zealand spying service to be picking up my every word. You know, there was a court, there was a, a case here, okay, four million people. This is like a sort of a psychology experiment, New Zealand. But maybe 10 or 15 years ago, there were huge big raids on the Maori up in the north. Well, the Maori are not happy at all to be a conquered people. And 
New Zealand has gone to huge amounts of uh, trouble to re 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 reimburse the Maori for bad th and all that stuff that's happened. And mm -hmm. but white people white people have got a lot to answer for. White culture has destroyed a lot of people's cultures, and we're the generation that's getting the backlash from it. Anyway, the story is finally. The police went and raided some place in the middle of a forest where the Maori had a training camp and a whole lot of weapons stashed. And somehow they managed to get away with it. However, there was trials, and I think the guys got off, but there were terrorist trials for these alleged things. And the main piece of evidence that came out in court were phone calls. Wow. Uh -huh. and we're so they wrong. had, what happens is you can say whatever you like and you can be whoever you like and nobody listens to you. But as soon as you are under suspicion, all your phone records, everything you've ever said is all of a sudden fair game. And they can go back 10 years.